Hi, welcome to Mondays with Melissa. A topic that's really been very prevalent lately is the topic of aging in place and how everybody really says they want to age in their home, they want to stay in their home, and they want to remain in the place that they're so used to and comfortable in. But what we've explored over the past couple of weeks is that sometimes aging in place is not the best or safest option for somebody whose home might not be really uh, appropriate anymore for what their needs are, like the steps and the showers and the bathtubs and things like that. So what we were talking about at our caregiver conference were other options for living. There are independent living communities, there are assisted living communities, and then of course nursing homes, and even what the, they call continuing care retirement communities or life communities, where a person can buy in and move throughout the different communities as their needs change. They can go from independent to assisted to nursing home, depending on what their needs are. Now, of course, home care agencies, there are great opportunities out there to hire wonderful aides and stay at home if that is ultimately what you choose. But I wanted to get across just the importance of exploring the idea of these other living options and these other opportunities. I'm talking to you today from our Caregiver Resource Center, where you can come into our office in Melville and take a look around and take some pamphlets and look at these different um, resources that are available, whether it's independent living, assisted living, home care agencies, um, home safety, uh, monitoring, different things that are available for technology purposes if someone is remaining in their home just to keep them safe, um, remodeling. So it, there's a lot of great information here, so come check it out. Now where we come in on that is of course, how are you going to pay for these other living arrangements? If you're staying at home, there's always the option of Medicaid home care, community Medicaid, which we've talked about before. Um, at this time, there's still no look back for community Medicaid, so we can get someone eligible pretty easily. Um, and of course, the medical requirements need to be there in order for them to qualify. Um, and then for independent living, for the most part, that's going to be private pay or long-term care insurance and assisted living as well. However, there are some assisted livings that accept Medicaid and those are called ALP programs or assisted living programs. There's a handful of them throughout Long Island and in the boroughs. Um, and those are, I think, becoming uh, more and more common um, and will continue to grow as we move forward. But it's living in the assisted living environment, but being able to use community Medicaid to pay for it. And then of course we have the nursing home setting where we can do asset protection planning and get somebody on institutional Medicaid so that they can cover the cost of their care in a nursing facility, but also protect some assets to pass along to the next generation. So your estate plan, your financial plan, and your plan for long-term care really all have to work together. And so it's important to work with advisors and professionals who all know each other and work in the same environment and really understand how these things kind of um, work together. So uh, I, I really um, say that, recommend that everybody reach out and have a conversation about the different options. Um, certainly reach out to us here at Kona Elder Law, where we can share with you different resources and different individuals that you can talk to about these different living arrangements and really, you know, take tours and get a feel for what it is you're looking for, whether it's tomorrow or sometime in the future, and we'll get planning. Thanks for joining us. Put any questions in the comments and we'll see you next week.